Welcome everyone and thank you so much for clicking on this video. Today we're going to be taking a look here at Alphabet. We're going to be continuing uh, studying this business. It is actually a very, very fascinating business. Obviously, right now, it finally dipped under that $100 a share, right? Which is kind of a milestone in that sense. Obviously, it has to do with that big split, right? right? We haven't seen this price for Alphabet in such a long time. Right now, it basically went uh, below the 100 bucks, or if we adjust for the split, below the 2000 So this is certainly a big mark. Uh, you know, actually, if we look back in history, it hasn't been that long that Alphabet has been trading at these levels. As we can see, it was only 20, uh, 20, wow, 2021, not really, 20, 20 basically right the last time when this was the case but obviously went all the way up to 150 right now came down about 35 percent which is certainly um, you know certainly quite a bit now the market obviously is down 25 percent so it is not as bad as it might seem at first glance but certainly this business has come down there aren't really any substantial reasons for it. Obviously, the business is right now slowing in growth. That obviously has to do with the macro, the macroeconomic environment. It is a cyclical business. It is an advertising business. If the economy is cooling off, the first things businesses are going to do is going to cut down on their marketing expense. So Alphabet and also Meta will have that cyclicality, will feel the impact of a a economy that is cooling off now the most interesting thing though is that even though this business is down 35 percent there is not like one like big black event or something that cost it right we have seen obviously the meta big huge drop due to that poor quarterly results uh, and also due to uncertainty of of the metaverse we have seen alibaba for example obviously punished by the market down over 70 percent right now uh, due to political tensions and such delisting and you name it also kind of slowing business performance but alphabet really doesn't have that yes they are slowing in growth but i would say it's rather natural slow slowing it is not like meta you know abrupt you know stop of growth basically no this business is slowing down in a more natural way basically going hand in hand with the overall economy so this begs the question, what is the business right now doing to tackle this deteriorating business performance, meaning slower growth? What is going on in the business? What is the business doing? And is it a great deal? Now, first thing first, let's just go over the internal business procedures. What is this business doing to counter the overall macro economic conditions? Now, my personal opinion about Alphabet is that this business is one of the strongest companies really that is out there it is remarkable how strong they are the assets that they own are incredibly incredibly dominant also more resilient against cyclicality than let's say a meta because meta focuses really on the small companies whereas alphabet is really a big representative of the bigger companies so the bigger companies usually tend to slow down their spending a little bit later on right not the first like headwind oh immediately slow down smaller businesses immediately feel that impact might not have the big reserves and such and do have to slow down so meta usually is a little bit more susceptible to that i would say alphabet a little bit stronger i would say that also google and um, youtube are two extremely dominant assets uh, much more dominant even than let's say in instagram and facebook even though i do believe instagram and facebook are also great assets to own don't get me wrong about that these are also great assets but i do believe if you have to choose between the assets of alphabet and meta alphabet wins meta is still a phenomenal company formidable uh, advantages and such but alphabet takes the lead here now once again, Alphabet sees growth slowing to double digits, low double digits. That's that's what they are basically growing at right now. Obviously, this could still change in the, the upcoming or quarterly earnings. We don't quite know. But so far, we know that they are growing about 10%-ish, a little bit more. But that is, that is what is going on with this business at this point. There is also a little bit of, you know, noise about regulation, further regulation that perhaps YouTube needs to be spun off and stuff like that. Uh, if you just do the math on that, it would actually pay off big time for shareholders if YouTube is spun off to a different company. Uh, 
assuming that Alphabet and YouTube remain very close corporation, right? Because the Google system, the Alphabet system, and the YouTube system are so integrated together, it would be a big shame for both companies if this all of a sudden gets deintegrated and such, right? If you keep this integration, both businesses will probably do quite fine. I personally don't think this this regulation will happen anytime soon. I mean. Uh, frankly, the world and the U.S. also has, you know, bigger problems uh, on their hands right now than, you know, the YouTube, Google monopoly position, if you can call it a monopoly. Obviously, that is the topic of debate. Now, let's dive into the the, the recent events. So, as we can see, Alphabet wants to pl avoid pleasant surprise. That's basically what they're saying, unpleasant surprise. As we can see, sharp slowdown in growth. Sharp slowdown, I need to nuance this a little bit, okay? Because what they're referring to is that stellar 2021 uh, result, which was like 40% revenue growth, which is really just crazy. Huge bum boom there. Uh, normally, they grow at about 20%, I would say, average. Right now, obviously, they are growing at about 10%. So that is indeed a, a slowdown. Is it sharp? You know, they, they, they call it sharp because they compare it to last year, which was 40% growth. But I think most people realize that this 40% growth wasn't really representative, you know, rep you know, representative of what was coming next for the business. I mean, you know, it is kind of weird to assume that a trillion billion, a trillion dollar business all of a sudden can grow at 40% year after year. It just doesn't make that much sense. I also don't think people believe that. So as we can see, they are preparing for dark scenarios. They are raising, you know, they are afraid for inflation, stuff like that, especially for the rates, of course. It's not the inflation that necessarily hurts the business per se, but the rates hurt the business. Uh, now, actually, it is important to bear in mind, though, that Alphabet doesn't have a lot of debt. They have a stellar balance sheet. So the balance sheet is extremely good. So the rates, the interest rates will not really impact the business at all. But you do pay a little bit of a premium for the Alphabet business, for the stock, and valuations do tend to come down when rates go up, and especially kind of in an unequal way. So the lower the valuation, usually the lower the decline is. So the, the lower the multiple, the lower the decline when rates go up, all valuations go down, but usually the more you pay f for every buck of earnings, right, the, the, the higher the PE, the bigger the hit will be. Now, this doesn't, you know, necessarily mean anything. Obviously, long term, it is all about business performance. But in the short term, you do see that businesses with higher multiples come down a little bit more aggressively than the businesses with lower PE ratios. And, you know, Alphabet is one that is still trading at about, you know, 16, 17 times PE. You know, it is certainly not that bad, right? It, it has seen much higher valuations, but it's still kind of considered a business that is eligible for a little bit of a more aggressive decline, perhaps, uh, than we might might be used to see. Also, they do not pay a dividend. Usually, these businesses decline a little bit harder, too. I'm not saying it's good or rational or whatever. I'm just saying, you know, usually this is how, uh, you know, how stocks react to specific short-term events. Now, as we can see, recession, terrible. What are they doing? As you can see, CEO calls it the toughest macroeconomic conditions in 10 years. Uh, and as we can see, we don't get to choose basically a horror scenario. So what precisely is a CEO doing other than just predicting you know, doom and gloom? As we can see, this, this article of CNBC actually tells us that there are some leaked meetings here. The CEO got a little bit... Uh, you know, Pichai got a little bit crazy, as we could see, spent much of this week's all-hand meeting addressing employee concerns about company cost-cutting measures. So that indeed already tells us what is this business doing, cutting costs. I already made a little video about that for Meta. Alphabet is also cutting costs dramatically, could actually go up to about 10% of costs. Okay, so really a big, big cutting costs there, you know, margins could actually go up by, you know, a couple of percentage points there. So that could be potentially quite interesting. As you can see, Bichai, who expressed some annoyance during the meeting, I remember when Google was small and scrappy, we shouldn't always equate fun with money. Uh, you know, CEO talk, right? This is a man that takes the lead here. I, I like to see it. It always makes me laugh a little. Uh, obviously, we have seen 10 years of booming, you know, booming business. And people kind of tend to forget what 
uh, you know, what misery looks like. Obviously, we're not yet in that misery yet. The job market is still strong, stuff like that. But obviously, when you get into a recession, people have to be fired, right? And then all of a sudden, it kind of does matter, you know, that you put in a ton of hours in your work and try to get the best results and stuff like that. Uh, you know, sometimes people tend to kind of forget that uh, in, in, in the fun times, as we can see right now, also Alphabet is kind of known for this being this fun employer, right, uh, with all the gadgets you get and all the, the chill spaces and, and the nice open offices and stuff like that. At the end of the day, uh, we should bear in mind that the business, and this I think is actually a, a very good point for every employee, basically, right, at the end of the day, what really matters, a good employee, in my opinion at least, always knows at the end of the day i don't care about myself i care about the business now i think this is especially important for higher management such as pachai and this is actually a great you know great point of confidence for me you know to show hey he always realizes i like my people and people are of course important you should not fire them without any reason but at the end of the day the company matters the company and business performance matters that is at the end of the day uh, what is uh, what you know what will make the business thrive over time i think it's a perfect strategy i think it's a very brutal strategy sometimes because you have to lay people off that are you know unproductive or cannot be kept because you know the economy is slowing uh you know that obviously is a very painful thing to do but i do think it shows some great leadership here uh, to see you know to see that 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 the ceo is willing to take that responsibility so that is certainly great uh, as we can see, it's kind of an unfamiliar environment of slow growth. It is kind of true, right? I mean, it's, if, think about it. Last, you know, big period of decline, you, you basically year over year, right? I mean, you know, in COVID, you had some couple of nasty quarters. But if you really take a look back at, at you know, a big recession, the last one was over 10 years ago, right? Can you imagine? I mean, 10 years ago, what was Alphabet back then? Nothing. Right, right now, it's one of the most dominant businesses in the world. So obviously, this is kind of interesting to see how is this business going to deal with that. Uh, and so I like to see that the, the CEO is rather defensive here and think, hey, you know, uh, let's be careful here. Let's take measures if need be. I think that is great. Obviously, we, we don't quite know what the economy is going to do. It is certainly extremely uncertain simply because we see that rates are skyrocketing. But at the same time, consumer spending and also the job market is quite strong, which is kind of a unregular thing to see. Normally, it's like, OK, interest rates go through the roof. Boom, we slow down spending. We're going to lay off people. Right now, we see that happening. Obviously, Alphabet is no exception to that rule. So what we've learned so far is that, first of all, you know, this business is slowing in growth. What it tries to do in response is cut cost. Right, keep performance strong by cutting in cost. Now, what we also have learned is that management is really willing to go, you know, above and beyond, so to speak. Right, it, it kind of goes without saying for some people, I guess, to say, okay, the economy is slowing. Obviously, we're going to cut costs, and obviously, you know, we need to to do what needs to be done. But on the other hand, at the end of the day, you know, you know, businesses are at the end of the day still. Uh, you know, operated by persons. And these are not easy decisions to make, you know, to wake up one day and say, okay, you know, I'm really going to lay off a ton of people. Uh, you know, we're going to go into this this period with less fun. And also, you know, bonuses that get cut and stuff like that. Obviously, right, the bonuses are still huge, will still be huge. Don't get me wrong about that. No, uh, you know, no pity for them, so to speak. I don't think they, they want any pity. Uh, but it is certainly good to see that management is willing to do uh, whatever it takes. So I think that is always great. Uh, management is aware of the situation. That is certainly all I can basically wish for. Now, other articles have said that these cost reductions, we don't quite know how this, they will turn out and what, what impact it will have on, on margins. But we could expect the margins to go up with a couple of percentage points realistically. All right, so obviously, once again, kind of hard to say what it will do over time, but let's just assume they go up with about two percentage points, which would be like yeah, cost reduction uh, of about, you know, let's say 8%, something of a sort, uh, which should be doable, still a lot, but should be doable. Now, this is the Alphabet uh, DCF model. So what we try to do here is try to look at future cash flows and based on that, try to put a price tag on the business. 
I like the business. I would love to own the business. That is for sure. I mean, think about it, right? Uh, you know, I record this video using Google Chrome. You are watching this on YouTube or, or owned by Alphabet. We use it every day. It is a powerful business. It is a wonderful business and still has a long uh, runway to go, I believe. Now, I do, however, want to mention that Alphabet still is not extremely cheap. I know a lot of people like Alphabet also on the Internet, and I actually am very, uh, you know, seduced by the price right now, too. I mean, uh, you know, below the hundreds, it starts to get interesting, right? But at the end of the day, it is not a business that is punished as much as an Alphabet, Tencent, JD, uh, or a Warner Bros. Discovery, or, or even a Meta, right? This business is still trading at, you know, a, a, certainly a decent price tag. However, this is basically what we're looking at into the valuation. So as you can see, I've added some terminal growth here. What precisely does that mean? We just took a look at the assumptions for the upcoming five years, right? And then you end in the terminal value. We basically assume that the terminal value will remain equal for the rest of, you know, eternity, so to speak. So the, the free cash flow after five years is the final cash flow in that sense, and it will not really change. In this model, I added about 2% terminal growth, which basically means that after the five years, Alphabet will grow with about 2% a year. Now, that is obviously not a lot. I mean, in five years, if this business only grows 2% a year, it will be a little bit shocking. But based on these assumptions, this is the outcome, about a 12 to 13% return uh, based on today's price, which is certainly not bad. Look, it certainly isn't as, as attractive on paper as a meta or a Warner Bros. Discovery or something of a sort if you take a look at the cash flows, but you do get extremely strong assets and, and arguably more business strength in, in return. So that is certainly something that's kind of the trade-off you have to make. You got a strong business, a powerful business, a wonderful business but you do pay a little bit extra on the whole i like the business a lot and i am very very tempted to to take a bite out of it actually but i will let you know what i decide to do that was all for now thank you so much for watching please in the comments let me know what you think about this business and if you own the business and then i'll see you in the next one